Tajarri is when someone engages in an act thinking that this act is sinful and yet it turns out to be permissible. So if you see a cup and you think that the cup is filled with alcohol, you drink it knowing or assuming that it's filled with alcohol, but it turns out to be water, plain water. Now, you haven't really committed a sin per se. What you have committed, according to some scholars, is another sin called at tajarri at tajarri means to have an audacious spirit. An audacious spirit that pushes you into, into, into the, the, the state of mind we refer to as delinquency. A delinquent person is one who wants to commit sins. One who wants to break the law. That's why they call juveniles, young people who commit crimes, they call them delinquent. It's like they, 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 they just feel good about breaking the law. They feel good about drawing gra graffiti all over the place. They feel good about vandalizing shops and homes. It just, you know, it, they get a kick out of it. What we have, what this person has just committed isn't the sin of the consumption of alcohol because it was just plain water. But because they assume this was alcohol, they've committed an even greater sin, which is to have an audacious attitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it's called tajarri. Tajarri means to be audacious. So this is one concept. Now, a lot of, there are certain ulama who say that this person will be punished, but the majority say that this person deserves to be punished for what he's done, for the audacity to commit a sin, not the sin itself. But most ulama say that even though he deserves it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his infinite mercy will not punish this person. He's too merciful to do that because he didn't actually commit the sin. But you know deep down there's something wrong with a person who drinks something thinking it's alcohol even if it's not. Now, this concept aside, there is another concept called At-Tashabbuh. At-Tashabbuh means that a person, as an example, picks up a glass of, of water knowing that it's water, it's not alcohol, they don't think it's alcohol. And yet he drinks it in such a way that resembles one who is drinking alcohol. Haven't you seen people act like they're drunk, even though they're not? All the ulama, all the scholars issue a fatwa saying this is haram. And the person will be punished for what they've done. They haven't drank anything that's haram. They haven't. And they know they haven't. And they didn't really have an audacious spirit in the sense that they wanted to break the law, but they couldn't. But here's what they've done. They have desecrated the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's about desecrating the limits set by Allah. It makes this sin seem less evil in the eyes of, of the general public, the people that are observing this, right? That's why ulama say when you pick up a cup, you know, you, 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 can't, you can't hit the cups like that, like, like, like they do when, when they're about to drink alcohol. You can't act like you're drunk. You cannot imitate the evildoers. Because when you do, what you have committed is a sin punishable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this ziyarah, what we're reading is telling us exactly how we're supposed to conduct ourselves in this life. Allahumma ij'al nafsi what? He says, make me draw away from the morals of the evildoers and make me closer to the morals of the good men and women of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the true servants of the Almighty Lord. Look at the, the history of the commander of the faithful. Look at how he conducted himself and how one day he's presented with a cup full of apple juice with shredded pieces of apples in it. They bring it to the Imam. It's called Faludij. It was a new invention. The Arabs didn't know how to make it. It was probably mixed also with rose water and uh, things that really made it taste very well, very good. It was a new invention. It was brought from, from the Persian Empire, the, the Persians that invented this drink. They brought it to the Imam. The Imam took a sip of it, then he put it back. They said to him, 
أتحرمها يا أمير المؤمنين is it حرام the imam said no it's not حرام but I I'd rather not drink it why O أمير المؤمنين لأني أخاف أن لا ألحق بأخي وحبيبي رسول الله because I'm afraid that if I drink this I would have done something that my beloved sweetheart my brother the messenger of Allah didn't get the chance to drink in this world and by indulging in this temptation which is not haram nobody's saying this is haram but by indulging by 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 having pleasure in drinking this drink I'm afraid I I won't be able to catch up to my to my brother Rasulullah because the we know that the commander of the faithful followed the Prophet in such a way Fasil is a calf, is, a, is, a, is the child of a, of a camel. The way a, fas, a fasil, this calf, follows its mother is by placing its feet in the exact same spot as its mother. Doesn't deviate from the path. Doesn't try to innovate a shortcut towards its mother. Doesn't try to get ahead of its mother. It doesn't. All it does is follow in the footsteps of its mother. The Imam says that I followed the Prophet in the same way as a calf following in the footsteps of its mother. I always placed my feet, literally speaking, literally. The Prophet would walk ahead, the Imam would walk behind him, and the Imam would place his feet in the exact same position as the Prophet himself. That's how we reach the morality of the Prophet. The thing is, a lot of people tell you, we can't imitate the Imams, we can't imitate... A woman says, well, I can't imitate Fatima to Zahra. Sure, you, can't, you can never be Fatima to Zahra. And yes, to a certain extent, you're right, you can't imitate Fatima to Zahra. But you're not even trying. You're not even trying. Give it a try, see if it works. If it doesn't, at least you've tried. Most of us don't even try. We give up from the get-go. We say, well, we can't. Amir al-Mu'mineen is up there. Fatima al-Zahra is up there. I can't really reach them, so forget about it. So if I can't imitate Amir al-Mu'mineen, should I then imitate Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan? يوم يأتي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, كل إناس كل أناس بإمامهم On that day, the day of judgment, every group of people will come Will, be, will, will, will present themselves for judgment in the company of their leader. Now, if on the day of judgment, they said, O oh, followers of Ali ibn Abi Talib, now it's your turn to present yourselves for judgment. And you tried to follow, because obviously we're all followers of Amir al-Mu'mineen, and suddenly you were told that, hey, wait a minute, your leader isn't Ali ibn Abi Talib. A leader is the one you followed, right? Your leader isn't Ali ibn Abi Talib. Your leader drank, your leader committed adultery and fornication and lustful looking and all sorts of different sins. Your leader is Yazid ibn Muawiyah. What are we going to say? Can I say no? My leader is Ali ibn Abi Talib. Well, if I, if I don't even try, if I don't even put a little effort into imitating him and imitating his morals, how can I claim that he's my leader? We have a ziyarah for the 12th Imam in which we call him this. And this is an even more specific reference to what I'm talking about. We say, Ashhadu annaka muqtadai. I bear witness that you are my leader whom I should follow and imitate. Muqtada means someone who was followed and imitated. Well, if I bear witness, listen, it's like a person going to court, giving false testimony. This is exactly what I'm doing here. I am giving false testimony that the 12th Imam is my leader. Where in fact, if I were to take a quick look at my life and my daily routine, I wouldn't see the slightest resemblance to the 12th Imam. Why am I like that? So we say, oh Allah, make us closer. Give us the ability to imitate the morals of the people that you love and the people that love you. Like Ali ibn Abi Talib. Like Imam al Hussein. Like the commander of the faithful one day in the battle of Safin, when the Imam arrives at the battlefield, Muawiyah had already set camp and he'd, his, his soldiers had unpacked and they were all waiting for the Imam to come. Now because they had a, uh, they, they were there before the Imam, they had a home field advantage. Which meant that by the time the Imam arrived, they had already seized 
uh, the 